with special guest star, Shiryuki. Hello everyone, welcome to Star Player One. I'm Brian Knight. And I'm Shiryuki. And we are playing Code Realize. Now this is, the actual title of this game is Code Realize Bouquet of Rainbows. And that's because it includes both Code Realize games. Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth and Code Realize Future Blessings. This is a heavy visual novel game. So there's going to be a lot of reading, a lot of mis- <laughs> We're going to say a lot of things wrong and go back and recorrect ourselves. <laughs> Anywho, the basic of the story is we're following this female heroine who people call her a monster because apparently things she touches dies. And the guy she meets on her journey are based off literary figures like Frankenstein, Austin Lupin, Helsin, Saint Germain. But let's get right into it. Guardians of Rebirth. Oh, that's a cute little. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> this game's got a lot of praise for being a very well, quickly acclaimed game. On a train with an unknown destination. I really like the music in this. That's a cool opening. There is an anime of this game out too. So if you want to go see it, that's fine. I recommend it. It's on Crunchyroll. Uh, no. Because <laughs> you misspelled your own name. <laughs> we had a little task just to make sure it audio and everything was fine. We did turn off the voices. So we don't. when we're reading off what they're saying, you're not hearing Japanese in the background as well. There we go. Shiri Yuki. That is an H. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Are you sure you want to use this thing? Yes, I do. I'll let you start reading. You want me to read this? Yep. Who am I? What am I? Where did I come from? Where am I going? Loved by no one, needed by no one, and my existence holds no meaning. Then why am I here? I ask myself a lot of these questions, too. <laughs> Shiryuki, my beloved daughter. I can hear my father's voice. History has already started to shift. He has a gentle, peaceful voice. When you awaken, humanity will have taken its first steps down a path that ultimately leads to the truth. You will lead the people from God's cradle to the expensive world of knowledge. Shiryuki, it all begins with you. I love you so much, my dear daughter. His hand touches my hair. His hands, big, strong hands. His touch is so comforting. But, because I love you, I must keep love from you. You will be alone forever. You must never know love. You must live in isolation. 
The more you know of love, the more you will be made to suffer. Because you are a monster. I love how the, love how the audio stops. <laughs> Six years later, in 1853. Everything is normal. So annoyingly normal. There's no sign that anyone will appear. They're really making me wait. At this rate. London Bridge. Would you kindly shut up? The man takes the binoculars from his eyes to glare up at the man slumped beside him. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to pass the time. Can't a man even hum to himself? Listen, we need to stay on our toes. We're about to pull up the heist of the century. You can't expect me to stay on my toes for five days straight. These men have been lying here and hiding on this bare plane for five days already. Ugh, I miss London. The food, the drink, the woman. Stop complaining. I didn't think we'll be here waiting here for so long either. Don't you think it would be faster if we just went out and stole it ourselves instead of trying to snatch it during transport? If that was possible, we'd have done it already. All we know is that in this area... All we know that's it is, is that it is in this area, so all we can do is go after them. And they're sure taking their sweet time, that's all I'm saying. But they'll come around eventually. Listen, a thief has to have... Yeah, 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 I know. A plan and the patience to pull it off. You've been saying that over and over for the past five days. While sitting, he takes a small device from his pocket and holds it up. He looks at it doubtfully. This isn't going to blow up like last time, is it? <laughs> what? No way! I'm the world's greatest engineer! It's going to work fine. I guarantee it. Yeah, well, your guarantee isn't worth... Hang on. A group of soldiers appear in the binoculars view. They're here! Seriously? First man nods and continues to study the situation. Four military automobiles, one escort transport, about 20 soldiers in total. And just their luck, one of the vehicles is carrying hunting dogs. A man who appears to be the commander is in the lead automobile. But from the way he looks, he won't be an easy target. It's a huge unit. It could be trouble. But the report was wrong. They aren't Twilight. They're from the from their uniforms, they're royal family guards. What are they doing here? What's this? They're not what you were expecting? Maybe we should change the plan. No, this actually will work out better for us. Stick with the plan. Meet me at the rendezvous point. Are you serious? What happened to a plan, the patience to pull it off, and all that stuff? That's not the full saying. When those don't work, a thief has to be daring. He trusts the binoculars aside and prepares to leave. <sighs> Alright, don't you go dying on me. I still need your help with a number of things. Who do you think you're talking to? It'll take more than this to kill me. With that, the man runs into the darkness. That's thing forever to piece together the clues leading to this moment. He will reach his target. The moon is hidden behind some clouds. That's not good. The dark just makes it easier to run, but it's hard to track. Captain! Lunard! We have surrounded the mansion! Excellent work. Anyone attempted to leave the building is to be captured. Yes, sir! The captain returns the soldier's part in salute, then turns to the abandoned looking building that stands before him. Through a meticulous search, he finally located this mansion hidden in the forest. The initial reports have been correct so far. So, this is where the monster has made its den. He is not eager to complete this mission. A search and capture operation such as this does not normally fall under his purview. Rempart Leonhardt Knight and captain of the Royal Guard furrow his brow. The men under his command are the Royal Guard, protectors of Queen Alexandria Victoria, supreme ruler of Britain. 
Your current situation mission is to protect Queen Victoria as she travels to Wales for an inspection tour. However, he's received a message through his ether communication device. The communique from Finnis, the British military technical advisor, who holds authority and government research projects. Capture the monster that hides within the mansion in Wales. It may already be dead, if so, quickly dispose of the body. However, if there is a chance that it's still alive, it must be captured at all costs. Shortly after this message was sent, advice was delivered that could supposedly detect the monster along with instructions. <sighs> this mission is probably of little importance to Finnis. If it had been, Finnis would have uh, sent out his pawns from the special task force, Twilight, that carried it out instead. There's just so little information to work with. What is this monster? The creature's touch causes flesh to melt and fall away? Is this meant to be taken literally? Perhaps it's more of a figure of speech. The owner asked for clarification multiple times, but Fennis never responded. There's no use in brewing over it. Captain, we are prepared to enter. Leonhardt brings his thoughts back to the present and focuses on the task at hand. But Captain, we're only going to be facing a single target, aren't we? Do we really need all of these security? Idiot! We have no idea what we're facing, only that it's a monster. As swords of her majesty, we cannot risk failure. We will take any and all necessary precautions and avoid any possible missteps. That is how a knight prepares for battle. Yes sir, sorry sir. When he sees that his troops are prepared, Leonhardt gives a small nod. All men remain at full alertness. Squad 1, lead the way inside, followed by squad 2 and 3. Doors are quickly kicked down and the soldiers and dogs rush into the dimly lit interior of the mansion. All clear over here. This room is clear too. Leonhardt follows his men inside. The soldiers quickly spread out and soon they have taken over the whole mansion. So far no monsters have been found. How long has this building stood empty? The walls are rotten in the humidity, and shafts of moonlight are filled with dust. The dogs that have sensed an unseen danger have not stopped growling the entire time. As Leonhardt steps forward, the small device meant to detect the target emits a sharp sound. The captain gathers a few of his soldiers and follows the device, which squeals as he stands in front of a particular door. It is in here. He switches the device off and slips into his pocket, then motions to the guard to prepare. He prepares himself to face the monster that awaits him on the other side, then gives the order to break down the door. <laughs> the soldiers smash through and rush inside. A skylight lights some, lets some light into the room, but the moon has stuck behind another cloud. However, he can sense tension in the room. A strange atmosphere fills the air. The room is packed with dolls. In this dim light, the sheer number of them is unsettling rather than cute. The shadow of a person can be seen sitting in a chair in the center of the room. The shadow doesn't move, even when the guard is soldiers surround it. it guns drawn. Either this person is very brave, or as the message suggested. Is it, is it dead? One of the soldiers approaches the chair. The shadow slowly raises its head. At that moment, the clouds part, letting the light into the room. Long, glossy hair. Ooh, she's very cute. <laughs> I can't be saying that in my mind. <laughs> Metal colony eyes slowly opening. Her flawless skin and symmetrical face more than resembles a doll. Her clothing is strange, seeming more decoration than fashion. Anything about her is oddly mystical. The girl blinks once slowly, her blank eyes taking her surroundings. At this simple action, Leonhard hears himself and the others gasp involuntarily. This beautiful girl, led from above like a soft moonlight, like an ithrit an creature. Blah. She must be a monster. This is like 
music always stops at that exact <laughs> moment every single time. Yeah. Whenever they say monster, it's like, stop. I wonder if she has, like, since, like, oh, never mind. I'll, I'll talk about it later. I hear voices. That's, <laughs> that is you. That's a, you say it. No, sorry. I hear voices. The voices of many people. None of them are my father. Why did they wake me? I wanted to stay in my slumber forever. I wanted to stay with my dreams forever. This is... Oh, that's... This is the monster? Monster? Yes, I am a monster. Captain! Is this the girl we were sent here to capture? Yes, it's, it's hard to believe, but this seems to be the case. I was just expecting something more... Monstrous, but she's just a girl. Idiot, don't let your guard down. Hey, what are you doing? Come down, come down! I know that sound. A dog's growl. I've heard it before. Dogs are chasing me. They are growling and barking. Trying to bite me. Trying to eat me. To kill me. They were so much faster than me. The dogs. A large dog barks loudly and leaps on me. Stop. I protest weakly in a scratchy voice, but the dog has me pinned in my chair. Its teeth tear through my clothing and pierce the skin of my shoulder. I can feel my blood flow from the wound. In the next moment, the dog yelps and jumps back. Hey, what's wrong? As he speaks, something happens. The dog's mouth begins to melt. Like mud, it begins to drip and fall away. The dog's head and neck begin to crumble and the oozing mass of flesh fizzles. The dog drops to the ground. It rivets rith in agony for a short time. What in God's name? Why? Because it touched my skin? Because of a tiny drop of my blood? Just like an this mishap in corpse makes me feel awful. It died because of me. The men around me tear their gaze free from the mess and back away, still surrounding me. Watch out! It really is a monster! Don't move! Move it or shoot! Fear and confusion, doubt and anxiety. It's just as before. It's very scary, but somewhat familiar. Surround her, but keep your distance. She can kill you over the touch. She's got the touch. <laughs> Compose yourself, men. Never point your weapons at a lady. One of the soldiers cries out. But, Captain, we have to do something to protect ourselves. You have to realize that. Of course I understand. I saw what happened here with my own eyes. I doubt I'll forget it anytime soon. But, calm down. Look. She doesn't look like she'll try to resist. I remember seated in my chair, but I looked up to meet the speaker's eyes. Even with this incident with the hound, she tried to stop it, but it was over too quickly. She didn't, she didn't intend for it to happen. Yes, but... The leader approaches me and gently kneels down, putting his face at my level. Little Miss Monster, I would like to apologize for our rudeness during our sudden visit. Would you please accompany us? His gentle but firm tone leaves no room for argument. After a brief pause, I nod. I stand without another word and leave my room behind. I have no reason to resist. How many years have I been staying here? The people are so tense. I see fear in their eyes. They see me as something foreign. I wonder if the, these people will kill me. If that is why they have come here. So be it. I had res reservations, but I'm not scared. That poor dog. It shouldn't have been the way that way. The dog should have killed me. Horseless carriages cut their way through the quiet of the night to meet us. They tie my hands and load me into one. I stare up through the window at the sky. I have no interest in where they are taking me or what will happen in me there. If I'm going to be killed, I feel oddly revealed to think relieved to think this but but I have only one regret just one I wish that I had it all happened so suddenly a crash and flash cut through the night the car ahead of us flips over and rolls over on the road the carriage we are in screeches to a halt before we hit the overturned car ahead the car behind us tries to soar, but tips over, crashing into us from behind. 
Restricting vehicles block us in. What is? Are we under attack? The road exploded. I can't see anyone outside. Everyone riding with us draws their guns and exits the car. Whoever you are, know that you have attacked the finest soldiers in Britain. <laughs> I know exactly who you are. A voice rings out in the night. Where is he? Where's that voice coming from? Over there! On top of the ruins! I turn to see where the soldier is pointing. There is something standing there. I see a figure... What does it say? Silhouetted. Silhouetted by the moon. And we will have to stop there. Ooh. This triangle. <laughs> yep, sorry, we're out of time. We're getting to it. Next episode, we'll find out who this mysterious figure is who's standing on top of the ruins. Anyway, if you like what you're seeing, like, comment, subscribe down below. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next Star Player 1 episode. Bye! Bye.